By this point, I figure probably a lot of people have come to the understanding that I'm a little bit of an oddball. And I will tell you that I've been in a little bit of an oddball for most of my life, and I have certain suspicions about why, why that is. And one of them is I believe that I'm probably mildly autistic. I've never been diagnosed, so I can't tell you that with any certainty. But another thing that happened to me was we did a lot of moving around. And when I say moving around, I'm not talking about people who went state to state. Oh, no, we left the country when I was pretty young, when I was like seven years old. I'll talk a little bit more about that when I do my notes and long, further into the video. But the fact is, leaving the country taught me certain things, and I got certain things from different places, but I'm going to talk a little about one of the countries that I actually spent the majority of my childhood in, in the subject Tyrants Down Under on the Daily Summation from Kurt's Religion and Politics. I'm your host. I'm Kurt. Today is Wednesday, the 3rd of November of 2021. Welcome to everyone who's here on Rumble on the podcast and on YouTube. And again, the subject for today is going to be Tyrants Down Under, and I'm going to run through my notes real quick to give you an idea where I'm going with this little video. Now and then, I make reference to my childhood. In one of my recent videos, I indicated that I lived in Australia for a large part of it. Uh, from about seven or eight years of age to, uh, to somewhere around 16 w would be the time frame. So I'm basically about eight years, somewhere in there. Eight, nine years, I'm not sure exactly. I'd have to do some calculations to be really sure. My time in that country by no means makes me any kind of expert on it. That said, I learned a thing or two while I was there. There was one lesson more or less nobody ever taught me when I was there. What was it? Reliance on the government is a good thing. Even the guy who tried to convince me government was a good thing wasn't willing to sell that loser, not to me or anybody. I bring this up because I recently heard a young woman, maybe not so young, I'm not sure, I didn't get a real good chance to look at her, so I don't know, uh, who tried to intimate that the Australian people, unlike those rebellious Americans, actually counted on the government to keep them alive and healthy. I used to make a joke when I came back to the United States, but honestly, I was only half kidding. I used to say Americans thought fighting for their country was a great idea. Australians just went bush when the government tried to enforce their will and said, gotta find us if you want to rule us. You may think that's just a big joke, but I uh, can I make it clear where things are? Yes, the Queen of England is on the money. Yes, last I heard, Australia had a governor general, and something I found interesting about a Canadian guy is he didn't realize probably there's one in Canada as well. Who is the governor general? That would be the Queen's representative in whatever country, so in Australia. Uh, that said, the last time one disbanded the national government, he was recalled by that Queen. Put simply, the Australians may be part of the Commonwealth that does not mean, though, that they're not aut autonomous. Th uh, think their general dislike of government ends with the British crown? Let me just tell you, at least outside of big cities, much like the denizens of the United States, most Aussies have virtually no use for government. Like America, Australia is a land of many rugged individuals. Maybe things have changed in the 40 years since I've been there, but I seriously doubt most folks have become reliant on the government for much of anything. When I hear people trying to ascribe an attitude of helplessness that more or less requires the government figure things out in their, uh, you know, from their ineptitude, uh, where the people of Australia are concerned, I have to tell you, I highly doubt that's anything like generally the case, even 40 years after my time there. As with every other country, though, there appear to be tyrants in charge of lots of areas in the land down under these days. Look, a large part of Australia is still generally cut off from the national government most of the time. National government, everybody thinks it, it presides in, in Canberra, and they're sort of right. It actually presides in the second territory in Australia from the one that I lived, which was the Northern Ter Territory. That's the ACT, or the Australian Capital Territory. But the point is this. Most Australians have 
well, I don't know anymore, but when I was there, most Australians had never been to the ACT, had no interest in going and didn't think it was worth their time, and by the way, didn't give two hoots about the people who were there and 90% of the situations they found themselves in. Australians, particularly the ones who did not live in those uh, thronging metropolises like Sydney and Adelaide and, and to some degree Perth and... Uh, um, uh, I forget the other one, Melbourne, right? So you could argue some for Tasmania and a little bit for Brisbane. Most of them, most of the people who do not live directly in those cities, and you may rest assured there are more than a few, those people do not expect the government to do much of anything for them. That is not how life works for those guys. They live out on their own, and, and they work, and they do what needs to be done in order to survive. So when I hear some government um, mouthpiece, whether they're actually an authority figure as well as a mouthpiece, or just a mouthpiece, saying things like, well, the Australian people, you see, they all uh, expect to have, uh, have um, government take care of them, and they've been that way literally from the beginning. I go, um, no, I didn't know any Australians when I was there, and I'm not saying there weren't any, I'm just saying I didn't know any of them who wanted government to take care of them from the cradle to the grave, or even largely, even in a serious kind of way. Mind you, I think that there's a lot to be said for the same set of ideas here in the United States. I believe that that's probably true here just as much as it is uh, in, uh, just checking a couple of things, uh, in uh, Australia. But the thing is, in Australia, considering a, a comparatively small number of people, you have to know that in that country, you had to be people who could basically survive. And let's remember how Australia started. People want to argue this, want to disagree with this. Australia started as a penal colony. And the people who were sent there were not sent there with the idea that they were going to be babied when they lived there. They were sent with the idea that they were going to have to look after themselves and deal for, deal with the world on the, on the world's terms instead of on the terms of teeming metropolises like London. Okay, they weren't. They didn't go to Australia with the idea that the that they were going to be taken care of. Then, when other people came to Australia, and others did, it wasn't just a penal colony. There were people of various other kinds who came to Australia for a variety of reasons. It wasn't hoity-toity people for the most part, and it wasn't people expecting to be waited on hand and foot. I'm not saying that there weren't those who were in that mode and in that way of looking at life, but for the most part, most Australians would not play that game. I'm not saying you didn't have gentlemen and, and ladies who were there who were, you know, who were ended up making their way, but I am saying that most of them realized I have to be able to take care of myself because nobody else is going to do it. And the only people they had who would take the time, take the effort to do that, was friends, you know, mates, who, the, who would help them out and they would help their mates out. But it wasn't government. It wasn't government. And I don't believe for a many of those people it's that way today. Now, if you talk about a place like Sydney, I imagine you're talking about somewhere a lot more like New York City. It's not nearly big enough to be considered New York City, but that having been said, it still has a city-fied, gentrified sort of a viewpoint to that city. And the same is probably true, again, of Adelaide, of Melbourne, of, uh, of uh, Hobart, to some degree of Brisbane. But when you get outside those areas, a lot of Australia, even if it's not a lot of people comparatively, but a lot of Australia is full of rugged individuals who do not have any interest in government generally intruding in their lives because it doesn't have anything to do with their lives on a day-to-day -day except where maybe taxation is concerned. It doesn't provide a lot of goods and services. That's done by people working hard and giving others what it is that they need. So this is my view of Australia. If you want to argue otherwise, I'd love to hear your argument, particularly if you are an Australian. I don't think many people are willing to do that. 
I need to go ahead and wrap up now. This is the Daily Summation from Kurt's Religion and Politics. I'm your host. I'm Kurt, and today is Wednesday, the 3rd of November of 2021. Tomorrow then will be Thursday, the 4th of November of 2021, moving every clo- ever closer to the weekend. Obviously, today we're in that middle of the week day, what they like to refer to as hump day. Thank you for everyone who's been here on Rumble, on the podcast, and on YouTube. Remember, Rumble is my preferred platform. You can give me a... Um, boxing glove or a plus depending on circumstances on rumble as a positive feedback you can give me a minus as a negative feedback if you feel the need to do that i hope that not too many people feel that way uh you can give me a thumbs up uh, or a like on youtube if you want to do that as a positive feedback and you can give me a thumbs down as a negative feedback on again on uh, dislike on uh, youtube if you feel the need to do that Uh, Today's subject has been tyrants down under and tomorrow we're going to talk about what you transmit and this has to do particularly with what a lot of people are doing and thinking when it comes to social media. I hope you're having a good day today and everything is going well for you and hopefully we will see you again on Thursday's edition of the Daily Summation from Kurt's Religion and Politics. The speaker on this edition of the Daily Summation is Kurt Schubert. This video was recorded on Wednesday, the 3rd of November of 2021. The Daily Summation is created for Kurt's Religion and Politics. Thanks for watching this edition of the Daily Summation from Kurt's Religion and Politics. I hope you found it entertaining or instructional and maybe both. Uh, if you want to see more from me, you can go to blogs.kpshubert.com. That's blogs.kpshubert.com. I am on Twitter, Parlor, and Minds.com. My handle on each of those is at kpshubert. That's at kpshubert. I have a Rumble and a YouTube channel. They are the Kurt's Re- Religion and Politics channels on Rumble and YouTube. I have a Facebook page. The Facebook page is Kurt's Religion and Politics as well. I have I am on Patreon. If you want to support me, that's one of the better places you can do that. And you will find me at Kurt's Religion and Politics on Patreon. I have a podcast. The podcast is podcasts with a with an S dot kpshubert.com. That's podcasts dot kpshubert.com. I think you should be able to find me with relative ease on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify as well. The best way I find to do that is to look for Kurt's Religion and Politics. You can try to use the Daily Summation. I find that it doesn't work as well as a general rule, but you can always try that. I'm glad to have you aboard today, and hopefully we will see you again tomorrow.